Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Playwrights Corner. I'm Peter Anthony Fields, and today we are going to continue on our new format that we started last time uh, with an interview of a person who's involved in the arts in some way, shape, or form. And today we have Jabari Cole. And hey, Jabari, how are you doing? Thank you. All right. Um, we are going to ask you some questions and get, let the public get to know you uh, a little bit better. Those who already know you and I know there are plenty who do. And um, uh, so let's let everyone else know who you are. Um, tell us um, about yourself. Um, well, like a lot of people, especially a lot of creative people, I have a day job. That day job revolves around um, tech support. Uh, I do freelance. Uh, tech support, so temp work as a tech person, help desk, field support. But then the fun stuff I do is in multimedia. So I do uh, photography, I do some uh, video production stuff, I've done some script writing, uh, concept, concept media design, I call it, because I've done concept art and then I've done like concept audio stuff. Um, just constantly working on stuff. Just formed an LLC uh, so I can be legit with it. And um, I'm constantly reaching out, as you know, Peter, to people who write so I can tell truly cinematic stories. I'm trying to get a, you know, several good quality shorts um, in my portfolio and my reel. So hopefully one day I can do a full length feature. Um, so I'm constantly busy, constantly creating, and I like it. That's my work. That's 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 awesome. Um, I, I had the same uh, uh, path that I followed, similar to yours, um, back in the early 1990s uh, when I uh, started uh, my venture into being an independent filmmaker. Um, I uh, I formed an LLC uh, called Little Beth Entertainment. And, um, and that, that's it's it's uh, it's fascinating for me to see uh, that this process is happening again with another artist, another creative. And um, that brings me to my next question, <clears throat> which is um, how important do you think it is for um, creatives to know the business side of of um, being into being in the arts and, and and being able to express themselves through their uh, through their works, and before that question, uh, before you answer that question, we'll come back to that. Um, tell me um, what got you into the uh, interested in the craft of storytelling um, and wanting to do something other than like tech support, which is perfectly fine, um, but uh, creative people long to do something else, uh, which is to tell stories. What got you interested? What sparked your interest in being a storyteller? Um, so back in 2014, uh, one of my tech support jobs just took a lot out of me. Um, I was doing, I, I was, what I was mentioning before, field support for uh, Anthem, uh, Anthem Life and Insurance here in uh, uh, Worthington, Ohio. And I was the only person on site and I was there for like six or eight months. And it just took a lot out of me. And then the project ended and it made me reflect on just, you know, all the previous time I spent just doing tech support work um, and just working in general. I mean, it just really burnt me out. There, there was a lot asked of me and I was just at that point uh, in life and in my tech career, I was like, well, I don't know if I can do this for another 10 years. Um, what do I really like to do? And it's always been creative stuff. I've always had the, the day job, but I've always just done something with audio and visual. Um, before that job, a buddy of mine wrote a children's book and he wanted it recorded as just an audio book. And it was really good. And I said, man, I know some voiceover people. Um, I could put some background music on it. We could turn it into an actual audio drama. And he paid me for it. And when it was done, I mean, he really got a kick out of it. A lot of our mutual friends got a kick out of it. My family got a kick out of it. 
And it told me something. Um, once you get an opportunity to really let your art shine, I mean, it's 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 just a, a feeling about it. You know, whether you're helping somebody else tell a story or whether you're telling a story, your own story. And I said, well, it seems like I'm good at that. Um, I had other experiences uh, before that where I created something and it, and it involved a story. Um, I had a uh, class at Columbus State when I was studying uh, uh, multimedia design back early 2000s. It's a video production class. And one of the assignments was come up with an idea for a short film. I came up with an idea that the teacher basically didn't like. And something in me said, you know what, this is still good. And I, I hated, I, I had to do it on my own. I shot it on a little Walmart camera. And once I finished it, you know, I, I got the actors organized, uh, all the other elements. And I didn't know my, I didn't know anything about film production. Or, I mean, I knew what the class taught me, but even then they, it was sort of just a starter understanding of filmmaking. But I went, you know, I, I, first time I ever directed anything, worked with actors, and I put that thing on YouTube. It got like 2,000 views within a month. People actually teared up when they saw it. Wow. That was one of those experiences. I, I, again, I had this tech support job was burning me out, and I was just reflecting on everything that came before that job and trying to figure out, well, what do I want to do? So... After all that reflection on what I'd done before that, you know, what I did for my friend and then what I did many years before that, I said, I am a creative. I need to figure out what to do with that. Um, so what happened was I, I said, well, it was very interesting. Um, I kept getting paid. The project ended, but I kept getting checks. I thought it was weird. I thought it was a mistake. And they said, no, 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 until we find you another job, you're still on salary. I got checks up until the, uh, for the next three months. And then I had a tax return coming. Now, anybody else would have just looked at it like, oh, it's free money. That's sort of when I, I acted on the business thing. Now, I didn't start the LLC back then. All I did was just take that money and I invested in some equipment, some software, upgraded my studio setup. Um, which is on the other side of the camera, which I could show it, but I can't turn the camera. Um, but that was the point when I really got invested. That was back in 2014. Um, and then as I went, I, and what I did was I got some video equipment, mics and stuff, and I just went out and shot stuff. I shot a fundraiser, went to a local bar, and uh, they were having a fundraiser, and I, I knew some of the uh, the bar owner, bar owners, and I said, hey, you want some video of this? And they said, well, sure. So I just recorded. Wasn't the greatest. The way I shot it wasn't the greatest. But it, again, it taught me something. It was like, you can go out there and use your creativity and make something happen and make a little profit. You need a little tenacity, you know, represent yourself right, and then just do it. So as far as like the... um the business side of it, if every artist uh, needs to pay it, yes, because I mean, once you make the, the choice to go into it, you definitely have to pay attention to it. I mean, if you just want to create and it's just a personal thing, it's not some big production thing. OK, that's cool. Everybody's um, drive is different. I. I struggle with I, I just don't want to work for anybody. I'm tired. I mean, the returns, very diminishing. I mean, um, you know, we've talked about this, Peter, uh, especially for Black people. We're always in the pocket of somebody else. We're, our own self-worth is determined how much someone tells us it is. And that could work for anybody, Black, white, whatever, male, female, whatever. But I definitely think for Black people, we should tap into whatever makes us unique individuals and monetize the hell out of it. And that, that was the other thing in my head. I know I can tell a story. I can bring people into a world. And 
that's what I'm going to do. I, even if I, I don't become rich at it, um, if I if I just get two good works under my belt, okay, and they're at the grassroots level, I'll die a happy man. But I'm definitely going to just push it to the limit because, number one, that's my personality. I like to see how far I can go with things. For My parents will tell you that. Um, I like to see how much can I can I get away with with this thing? Let's 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 broaden our, our scope just because. Why not? What if I live by what if or a job can easily it can easily trap you? I mean, you you security can trap you. I mean, what you think you have to do and, and you know, and then you go to an employer, they've already figured out how much they're going to pay you. When you have the power to command your own price based off what you do and how uniquely you do it, that is very empowering for, from the business angle. And then as an artist, um, I mean, artists generally do stuff because they're inspired to do it. So you, you've got something in your head you think is pretty cool. You put it out there and it, people, um, they see your skill in it. And, and it's like, wow, I want to talk to that person. You know, maybe, again, they can help me with something. I mean, in, in the audio video world, you put out a good looking short film or even like a commercial for a company and it's very compelling. Somebody's going to come out and, and they're going to talk to you. And then you're, again, you have control over your yourself through your product and your service. And that's very empowering for an artist, I think. Now, uh, to pick up on something that you said, um, it's a couple of things that you said, which is uh, very uh, important to me, and I'm sure to a lot of other people out there, particularly people of color, um, you said that uh, creatives uh, don't really like to work for someone else. Uh, when you have that, that, that inspiration to, to create, you have to be free and do it on your own. And in order to do that, you have to, have, you have to form a business uh, within its within yourself or without yourself um, and uh, so uh, now what I what I know to be true is that as a person of color a black person um, it, it is four five six seven eight times more difficult to make it uh, through, uh, you can, you can definitely make it through, but it's going to be harder. There are more cards stacked against you. And that's just a fact, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, so what, if you were talking to a young black, uh, or other person of color, um, individual who wants to make it in, in, in the entertainment business, um, and be a storyteller and be self-sufficient. Um, what what would you say to them? What advice would you say to them? This is for um, men and women, and young and old, uh, but people who are BIPOC, basically. Yeah. Um, the first thing is reach out to other Black people who have made it, and even if they're not creatives. Because they will tell you that if, find black people who have had a business for at least five years, if not longer, and learn from them. Find other black people who have had success because they're going to tell you the way to, to, to um, survive in business in general and the way to survive as a black person. They're going to give you some insights. That's the first thing even if they're in an industry that you're not in. Preferably get someone in an industry you are in. But if you can't, somebody who's not in that industry is still a good resource. The second thing is, don't be afraid to learn from white people. You know, especially white people who, you know, call themselves allies. Don't be afraid. You, you can still learn from, you know, don't, I don't, don't want to paint everybody white as going to be your enemy. Um, and even sometimes if, if, if they may not be on the up and up, you can still learn from them. Um, so don't be afraid to learn from white folks. We're, we're in a system um, where, you know, white people 
hold the, the gates. Right? They hold the funding. They hold. So find out how they do it. And then just mirror that. F find a white owned production company and mirror that. You can do it. It's, the, the principles are all the same. You, you're going to need startup money. You're going to need um, other resources, human and otherwise. You're going to need to research what the common trends are, like in, in, in production and what types of mics and, and cameras and whatever. Um, stuff. Exactly. They're doing that too. And you can do that. There's an internet. Worst comes to worst, there's still a library. So gather up the knowledge, listen to other Black people who have made it, and then say lastly, but it's really firstly, um, look at your skill sets. What are you good at? I'll say it right now. I can do different things, but I know there's certain things I'm definitely really, really good at. The thing you do most natural is the thing you should focus on the most. If you're a really good writer, focus on that. Get that really tight and then learn uh, you know, network with other writers, uh, uh, find out what you have to do to monetize that, to, to be able to um, sell your skills as a writer. So yeah, find out what you're really unique at. I say I'm a storyteller. It's because I can, I can sit down, create designs for characters with digital art. Um, I used to draw. I can probably pick that up and, and do that again. Okay, there's software to help with that. So look into it. Um, I can do photography. So what do I need to know to become a better photographer? I know what I have innately, um, line and form and, and uh, uh, capturing emotions and whatnot, but how can I step that up? That's the other thing. Always step up your skills. You may be good, but you can always be better, okay? And that's gonna take some discipline. And, and you know, that's the other thing too most important thing, find people who um, will tell you, uh, will give you healthy criticism. That's going to be hard because if uh, most people are not going to be as motivated as you. It's going to be hard to do, you know, when you're taking a business path, you're, you're sort of walking away from the status quo. And I mean, nearly everyone is status quo. But very few people are going to understand. That's probably the most important thing. Learn to deal with being isolated with your vision, either as an artist or a business person. Um, it's 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 going to be a little lonely climbing to the top until you find like-minded people, and you will find them. But it will it might take a while depending on where you're at. So that's what I. Just one more thing, as far as you know, people of color. Um, it, there's an expression. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. Don't do that. Be your best friend. Because again, you're going to be alone in this stuff. You don't become arrogant and self-absorbed, but just have faith that you will do what you want to do and, and that things will fall in your lap. You will eventually put yourself in the right situations. If you're just starting out, it's going to be a lot that you, you're going to be overwhelmed with, but learn those things anyway. And then just, just let it, let it sort of be a, um, you know, kind of eat slow. Like the first thing I said, talk to other black people, we'll just spend a couple of weeks doing that. Parse, parse out all these activities. You know, once you've talked to different black people who've had the successful businesses, okay. Uh, who are the white people you know that have successful businesses? Okay, just talk. Spend spend even a couple months doing that. Just gather information. You know, you know and then, go ahead, go ahead. So, so don't uh, you're you're saying don't rush it. Don't uh, don't try to get a, a TikTok version of what you need to get to to be successful. Take your time to research and be patient and understand that that's a part of the process. Is that what you're saying? Yep, a business is like an investment. And anybody that invests money, they say the turtle wins the race before the hare. The more patient you are and strategic you are, uh, the more you, you'll, you'll win out in the end. The person who wants the profits fast 
and and just wants to do this thing and blow up in it. You can look at tons of examples, especially in the, the entertainment world. George Lucas was writing Star Wars years before it ever uh, got produced. He put all that. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, the prequels that came out, those were from what he wrote back in the 70s. Yes. When he brought that back, uh, uh, the prequels uh, in the what, 90s or 2000, 90s, I think it was mid-90s. Uh, late 90s, late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, yeah. Yeah, he put in a lot of work way before, you know, um, uh, before what we know came to Star Wars. He he worked in the shadows, okay, and, and, and very patiently, methodically figuring it out. Um, try to think of other examples. Uh, and and I would definitely say that that's the other thing. Whatever vision you have, don't be afraid to immerse yourself in it. There's not enough immersion. I did. Some of that you could blame on the Instagram and the and the, the TikTok crowd and everything. It's very dopamine. Get it now. Get that emotion now. Get that, you know, and no, 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 no. You're crafting something. You want to be a craftsman or a craftswoman, craftsperson. You want to sit down, look at your vision thoroughly. Now, now that comes with your own personal whatever that you want to do. If you're actually getting clients a little bit different. But even then, be patient with your client. Get them, get immersed in what they're asking you to do and then help them get immersed. Um, you're always an artist, even if you're not doing your own art. Because if you're, and you're, in, the, if you're in the business of media production and design, um, you're gonna use the elements of art. So take your time and feel out the, the, the um, the overall theme is something, the context, you know, that's going to leave the audience with a lot more. People always appreciate the thing that's crafted. You appreciate a home cooked meal more than you do a Wendy's burger. Nothing against Wendy's burgers. But... Right. Absolutely. And uh, picking up on, a, on a, another thing that you said, um, uh, you said that it's important that you develop uh, your skill set in different areas. And um, I, I would also venture to say, if, if you agree, do you agree, that uh, it's also important if you plan to be any kind of a leader, like a director or head of a department, uh, it's important that it's not, it's, you don't have to be the one to come up with all the great ideas, mm -hmm. uh, but it's important that you hire people or, or find people who are good at what they do, who are the best at what they do and identify that and have them join your team and contribute to the creation of the art that you're doing. Uh, what do you think about that? Oh, I mean, that's just essential. Like I have a project now. Um, it's kind of like my first short film project, uh, sh film short um, that I, I've done film shorts, but it was like a long time ago. So anyway, on this project, I had to network with, I'm not good in motion graphics, you know, animated titles and stuff. Um, I just now learned the ins and outs of uh, uh, After Effects, like as of like a year ago. Pretty good at it, but I'm not great. So I just networked. Um, there's a guy I've known for several years now. He's really good. And I said, hey, man, you want to help out with this project? And I mean, he did. And he gave me some pointers. I mean, he, he, when you're collaborating, you want good communication with somebody. So I'm like, well, hey, what do you need to know uh, that will help make your life easier for this thing? I know you, you obviously want to know what I want, but what else can I give you? And then communicate that. Um, communication is really important. Yeah. I mean, in any relationship, business arrangement, anything, right? say what you want or say what you have issues with, or you have concerns about, keep that communication fluid. The, the other trick is to um, be so good at your projects that people really like being on board with them, whether there's money or not involved. Um, the best way to sell someone on your idea, make it cool. Make it compelling. If it's not compelling to you, it won't be compelling to an audience or a crew. The actors aren't going to want to deal with it. Um, 
Because I think a lot of times what happens is, I mean, we don't have a lot of money, you know? Uh, so you want good quality people aboard with your project, but it's like, now again, you're worried about money or something. There are a lot of people who just, if something's cool, they'll, they'll like being a part of it. The project I'm working on now, there's no pay at all. I've had other ones like that. Um, I've had ones where there was pay, and then we just figured that out. But put as much as you can into your project to make it special, and the right people will come out and they will enjoy it. And the more they enjoy it, it builds the relationship. So when you get a bigger project, and, and then maybe there's actually a good size budget, you can say to those people, hey, man, we got something. I got something really special. You've already established, number one, they know you're invested in what you're doing. You're not just doing it. So then they're not just doing it. That helps the relationship. So basically make your stuff really good that people love uh, working with you. And um, sometimes they're okay with just volunteering because you're cool. You know, As, uh, know the history uh, of what came before you. Uh, I definitely agree. Right. Definitely. Because then you can see the genesis of certain things. And you may take something of the past and put it into your, your present thing. I mean, there may be uh, Timothy Burton. The reason why his style is so unique is because he looked at like old German expressionist stuff, like Fritz Lang stuff. And uh, oh, God, I can't remember all the names. Uh, there was some movie way back in the 20s or 30s, The Count of uh, Count of Monte Cristo. No, 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 not uh, the, the Cabinet of Somebody. And okay. it's, it's a really unique movie. It's, it's the sets are built and there's all these cutaways. And yeah, I mean, if you see it, you'll be like, okay, you know, we're Timothy Burton and stuff. Yeah. That influenced his vision. That's why he's such a visionary director. And I think people overlook that. Don't don't forget the past. The past can be very um, one long teachable moment, one, one very powerful teacher, you know, because again, you're seeing the genesis of all the things you see today mm -hmm. and you can build on that, you know, practical effects and stuff. Right. Um, or how they just told the story, how they told the narrative, you know. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and Spielberg is another one you can add to that, who studies, the, and Martin Scorsese, all the, the great filmmakers uh, of the, uh, who are now older now and, and wrapping up their careers, you know, hopefully not, hopefully they have many more years to come, but um, they, they are very respectful of the past and they, are, they are, uh, it, it openly say that this is where their inspiration came from, mm -hmm. the past films and uh, stories that uh, they love so much uh, growing up. And, uh, and I, I just, that's something that I really want to emphasize to any of the younger people watching, uh, listening, um, is that uh, don't, don't uh, shove off the past. Mm -hmm. Don't think that, oh, that's old. You know, it doesn't, doesn't matter now. They didn't know what they were doing. No, they knew what they were doing. Yeah. And uh, we, there's a lot that we can learn from them. Uh, the people of the past well there's a lot of art schools uh, or uh, well well art schools uh and and photography classes art schools or wherever they have the kids learn how to use a film camera way mm. right before they get them in digital because right. it's, it's it's a different um it, you have more patience for the image through the limitations of the technology so then when you go to digital you can you can transfer that discipline to, to the digital camera. Um, that's really cool. Again, that it to 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 some very petulant uh, person um, who's just in a hurry to you know whatever we is we all want to create those images and 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 tell that story that's just so powerful and so is a well it goes back to that what I was talking about with craftsmanship. You have to know the tools that came before the tools that you have now. Well, I'll say this, you don't have to, you wanna go into it and, and, 
and just rush something out, okay, sure. But in general, the art that people remember, there was craftsmanship to it. We all remember who framed Roger Rabbit. And you look at, I mean, that, that movie was just, it was just sick. It was amazing. Genius. And it just the, all the drawings they could, because that was by hand. That was not CGI. Yeah. They crafted every single frame of that movie. The story had to work. The images had to work. You know, I'm sure they did a, a dozen ton of reshoots, getting stuff at the right angles, getting actors to it, it, it. What we see that is entertaining and beautiful and everything else was probably a headache to do. Because craftsmanship, it it takes um, t- takes beating your head against the wall, you know. Um, even if even if you are doing CGI, you know, anyone will tell you creating a good looking CGI asset, you have to think of the weight in relation to other objects, you know, whole geometry thing, um, the 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 detail. I mean, there's a lot of thought that even goes into CGI. Well. You could look at something that was created practically, you know, when they didn't have CGI and attribute that to your CGI. Then your CGI may look better than somebody else that's just letting the computer figure it out. Right. A uh, 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 half, uh, I can say it, a half ass uh, project is going to get a half ass result. But yeah. if you really throw yourself into it, again, immerse, immersion. If it's a good actor, they're not just saying the line. They are becoming the line. And they're doing whatever they can. So it's not them. It's so then you believe and they believe. Um, I want to circle back to a uh, something that you said uh, a little while ago uh, earlier. Uh, you said that it's important that uh, people seek the advice of those who are successful in businesses, um, in the in the creative arts or what have you, and um, and to get their advice and their information and their knowledge. Um, I would venture to say that it's also important to seek the advice of people who started a business but, uh, for lack of a better word, failed. And you can also seek their advice and, and learn from them and not, not push them aside and say, you're a failure. You have nothing to offer me. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it might be hard to find, depending on the ego for some people. It's, it's hard enough for people to realize their faults. Or, you know, I mean, a failure like that, you know you had it. You had to do the bankruptcy paperwork or whatever. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of people don't learn from their mistakes. So if you find that person, oh yeah, listen to them. I mean, I wouldn't say I know everything about business, but I know you have to have a good or a product or a service that fulfills a need. I mean, every business that worked kind of saw what the market needed, where it was at, and then filled that void. Now, the thing is, if you're doing something like entertainment, audiences are fickle. Um, trends come and go. You know, um, you have to pay attention to that. Is your story, you may write a good story, but does it fit the time? It may be hard for you to sell that story. And then time is everything. Exactly. How much are you willing to go to? I mean, from what I know about movies, it's the funding that is that, I mean, you, you're going to hate me saying this as a writer. The writing is half the battle. I mean, getting the characters, getting the, compared to getting the funding and, 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 and getting a production crew on board, I mean, you have to go out there and become a salesperson. Because you have to say, I got this thing. It's really cool. Will you back me? And you got to get them excited. You got to, well, then you got to get ready for the door to get slammed in your face. You know, Yeah. you better believe in what you have and you better understand it's viable. And a lot of creative people, depending on how personal the project is, because business is kind of cold and, and especially entertainment business, it's, it's harsh. You can look up tons of stories where people had 
treatments for things or ideas and Hollywood passed for whatever reason. Uh, Tyler Perry is a good example. Before Tyler Perry was really anybody, you know, he was a guy, he was a playwright, did some really good plays. He went to Hollywood. He's like, hey, you guys want to help me out? Um, I'm doing really good as a playwright and my stories, I can put butts in seats. And what they tell him, either, well, so, not a lot of white people in your stuff, or, well, we don't think the public's really ready. He said, okay, went out, did it on his own. Look at where he's at now, because he believed in his work. Now, he knew it already had some bankability because, I mean, people were going to, 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 the sh to his shows. People were seeing his stuff. So in a way, like if you're an artist and you want to do the business thing, you have to put something out there and just see what how it catches. I'm at that point now, as, as you know. Uh, so my projects, the idea is just put it out there, see what the audience thinks. And if it doesn't do well, learn from it. Right. If you crash and burn, well, you didn't really because you're two or three steps ahead of the person that's still just thinking about it. Right. Or, or maybe doesn't have the resources to, to, to go as far as you do. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the equipment, all the stuff that I have, I was pr probably working a crappy job at the time and working tech support. And I'll let you in on something. So way back when I was in my 20s and I was even thinking about going to college, I had the business bug in me because I, I didn't really want to do tech support. I, I'm a tech person, but I'm not I'm not that obsessed about technology and computers and stuff. I only, I wanted, I was originally going to go to CC80 and study uh, uh, art and stuff. Mostly because people said I should, I could draw really well. And then I said, well, but what happens to people when they get out of CC80? They go into food service. At, at least that's the time, it's the 90s. You get an art degree, you, you're going to be doing food service. You, right. you know, good luck with that. It's like uh, uh, actors being waiters or, or waitresses uh, in a restaurant. I was like, you know what? I want something where I can make a lot of money and then eventually go back to my creativity and do something with it. And that was my exact mindset. This was like in the night, I was in my mid twenties. I'm glad I thought that way. And I didn't, I didn't quite see that as a business minded thing until many years later. Again, when I was back in 2014, when I was getting burnt out on doing IT work and I had that one IT job. But the thing was, because I was already thinking on that, I, I was thinking, all right, I want to pay myself whatever money I make. Um, they say a good rule of thumb is to put 20% of your income in the bank, if not more. And IT, you could make good money. You could always make it. That's always going to be needed. Technology, somebody's always going to have to troubleshoot something. Yeah. Um, so I did it. And then I was able little by little to put that into what I wanted to do once I figured out what it was. Um, for a lot of creative people, um, be ready to fund your stuff on your own, possibly. If you really want to make it happen. Um, okay, start there. Look at all the resources you have and plan way far ahead, but always believe in what you, you, you want to do. Again, you may not, there may not be a market there for it. Um, I mean, it's the hardest thing for an artist if you have four or five ideas and you got so much momentum and energy for them and you just want to put them out there. I, I want to do a comic book. I want to do a movie. I want to just do it. Well. It's a lot like me. <laughs> well, me too. Yeah. I think it's probably every, most artists are very multifaceted people. There are several things that they want to, and they may think it's cool and, and it, a lot of times um, it's very personal to them. I mean, again, the best art is created in the shadows. It's something that uh, may be therapeutic for a person, uh, whatever. You, you, you're, you've been working on this novel forever long, you know. Um, but the thing is, the world is cool. And in a way, you have to have a balance between being humble and being assertive. And being you, confident. Exactly. Um, 
I'll give you another example. Famous horror writer, Clive Barker, right of the movies Hellraiser, Candyman. Clive Barker started as a playwright. He wrote little plays um, where he lived in England and, and stuff. And of course, he's a novelist. Well, he's also a sculptor and a painter. A lot of his concepts he put on paper, he put on a canvas. Um, his first film was Hellraiser. He had never directed before. A lot of places turned him turned it down because it is a pretty bizarre freaking story. Yeah. But he kept with it. And of course, now we know who he is. Yeah. Well, to me, when you have that type of inspiration and that type of vision, you kind of owe it to yourself. If it's always on your mind, because he lived in his art, um, just kept going with it. The Again, I think I said before, the thing you do most naturally is probably the thing you should do. Whether you fail at it a couple of times um, or you find instant success. He's only directed three movies uh, based on... Um, uh, the, his creations and he said he's fine with that that's the other thing too once or if you get success in my opinion learn from that too and even be humble with that because again we're dealing with the entertainment world it's fickle they will eat you up get all the pop stars out there yeah. so i had a, a hit song and then people just forget it, it it's especially now i mean with the with the attention span the way it is Oh, that was like two weeks ago, man. Does that make it still bad? I still listen to some 30s, 40s, and 50s and 60s music. I, I still rock it, even yeah. when I was younger. I appreciate the artistry in it. But be that as it may, the rest of society is very cruel. The audience doesn't know what it wants until you give it to them, and you better believe in it before it gets to that point. Right. They're still going to throw it away at, at some level. So when it's all said and done, you should just be happy that it got as far as it did. Yeah. Oh, Good, advice. Good advice. Um, now, it's something that's important to me um, uh, is an issue with, uh, uh, let me tell you a, a, a brief version of a story, uh, a true story uh, that happened recently. Um, I won't give any names or anything like that, but there was a, a production company that was trying to put on a, 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 a live stage play. Um, and they needed uh, young Black actors to be in, in a part of the uh, production, uh, like say from the age of 20, 21, all the way down to 13, 12 years old. And uh, they looked for weeks for in, in a certain area of the state um, for weeks for the um, to find these uh, any 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 actor who would fit the the uh, roles that were needed. And uh, at at the end of the search, they came up with no one. There were no. Uh, young black actors, male actors who were auditioning, who were sending in audition tapes, or who were uh, um, responding to the uh, call for actors. And that's very concerning to me um, as a black man uh, in, in this uh, American society um, who loves the arts and being creative and telling stories, that there's a lack of um, black male actors, pe people who want to be actors. Um, and um, what are your thoughts on that? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I have heard people online talk about how Hollywood uses um, more foreign Black talent than uh, homegrown, so to speak. I have heard about that because it's it can be cheaper to pay them. And depending on where they're from, the, the acting is, is like George Lucas used to get reamed for using a lot of English actors because um, he didn't have to pay them the same way as American actors. Um, but I, I didn't know there was a shortage of black male actors. Um, that's interesting. I have to look yeah. at it. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it, 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 if it is a case, 
that really sucks because either they're not interested or the industry hasn't made it viable to them. Um, I don't know. Yeah, perhaps they don't see it in the same way. That's as as we know, there are a lot of uh, young black um, men who are heading try who are whose goal is uh, the uh, athletics, you know, sports. And um, perhaps it, it's something to do with uh, they don't see the entertainment world as something as valid or as exciting or as uh, promising as, you know, being the next LeBron James or whatever. I think that is definitely a shame. Nothing against athletics, although um, to sneak in my, my tiny bit of wokeness, I've always had an issue with the sports uh, industry and, and Black people, especially Black men, because it's very easy to get used. Um, I mean, they've had cases where uh, Black athletes are, are kind of pushed away from, you know, school or education for the sake of playing the game. Now, now I read about that late like around the 90s and maybe early 2000s. But that alone puts a bad taste in my mouth in terms of the industry. It's like you've invested in this young Black talent. If you care about Black people, you should encourage this young Black talent to get an education just like the white players have done, just like anybody else. Because um, you're not going to be able to dribble that ball forever. Um, you, you, you're literally on display you're on like corporate display um you know you, you're you know, it's this this you know tough athletic person who who can you know be pushed to achieve all this stuff well success comes in education and it shouldn't just be about you know so so bring it back to what you said if, if that's the case a lot of black men are saying eh you know screw the arts or whatever you know for sports or again instant and instant thing um that's disturbing to me we we need we need more black nerds whether they're athletic black nerds or not we need more thinkers and builders and engineers yeah even in the art even in the arts community you know if we had more black cgi artists um and we talked about this before. I want another black George Lucas, or another. I want a black George Lucas. Yeah. Again, I want I want more black nerds. Right. You know? And we've always had. I mean, Frederick Douglass was a black nerd. Uh, Huey P. Newton, Malcolm X. They all had to read, you know, to become who they were. They had to understand the systems of things, and you know, uh, see what was wrong, and and present new ideas. So. Yeah. That's what I think about that. I, I'll land my plane. Right. Um, and and I think uh, too that um, well, at least for me personally, I'm not going to say for anyone else. But for me personally, it leads me to think: what more should I be doing to uh, lead more of our uh, black men to come to the uh, to the world of storytelling theater and film and behind the scenes and as construction artists and set builders and cgi artists and uh, writers and directors and you know the whole the whole uh world of storytelling of entertainment uh, what can we do to encourage them to come to that this field well, I'm not sure I, if that's a question or not, but no, know. oh, I think I see the question in it. To encourage them, the first thing we, we've got to network more within ourselves. I mean, there are black directors out there, there, there are little Spike Lee's out there, there's little John Singleton's. We need to encourage them and promote them and, and, um, you know, seek them out and, and, form partnerships and relationships with them, you know, our own entertainment communities. Um, that's what I think we should 
us having this talk now, depending on who hears it, it might put a spark in somebody's head, you know. Um, I think the more we talk about it, and again, and encourage those young black creatives, I think there'll, there'll be a good outcome. I mean, if you've, you've heard of F. Gary Gray? Yes. Okay, that's a start. Um, well, I'm at, as an example of, now again, he's still on the leash of Hollywood. I mean, again, to be white is to own the gates, to be able to gatekeep. There's only so far you're going to let certain people go, either just be like an affirmative action thing. Oh, look, we, we got this one black director over here. Are you going to fund his projects, though? OK, he made you all this money. Um, what are you going to do for him, which is going to, again, reflect on the black community? Um, it's nice to have a symbolic gesture. We got a black man in here. He directed this thing that you allowed him to do that. Where are the other black directors that you're going to toss a few coins at and, and promote their ideas, which again, in turn, in fact, I'd say that's, that's the biggest thing. Go to white people in the arts and be like, Hey, you know what? Um, thanks for the representation, but can we get some, some support on some other stuff? We got some black creators that really doing some cool stuff. Can can you lift them up? Can you, I think, what was it, the Wrinkle in Time? I know I didn't do that well, but the remake, I think mm -hmm. that was directed by a black woman. Yeah. Now, again, it's a white property. You know? I mean, I, like I said, if more white people, especially on the creative side where there's money and there's gatekeeping, find black creators doing some really cool stuff, that would help us out a lot too. And I mean, good black folks who are representing themselves well and representing black people well. Um, they, they just need a little bit of that white money uh, to get more exposure and stuff. So that's one way. As far as in our own communities, we need to find those black creatives and, and get a platform going for them and get them linked up with other people. Because it wouldn't surprise me if there's some really effective, I'm going to say effective, not just creative, but effective Black creators out there who feel very isolated. They're isolated because they're, they're, they they have to use that in white-owned produ productions. And that, so they're, they're at the mercy of, of white creators. They want to link up with Black creators, but they may not know anybody, or they may not know people of good uh, professionalism and craftsmanship. We need to get them linked together. If you or I become a success, it is our duty to, to find those uh, young black creatives and and you know get that ball rolling. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, and also, uh, I think it's important that uh, we show the uh, the young black kids out there, uh, kids of color that um, storytelling is having a voice. Having a voice is exciting. It's, it's important and it's cathartic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you can use your voice to move people uh, in so many different ways, uh, in so many different positive ways. And uh, so if we can communicate that to them, that they have a voice and that they have something to say about life, about social economic situations or politics or whatever yeah. um you know then that's a positive thing that we can do uh definitely to help the situation well and even even again when we're talking about the past there have been successful but there was a there's a youtuber he's a conservative youtuber uh his name's mr reagan i think he's one of uh, ronald reagan's sons or something and i just came about I just doing a few uh, YouTube search or something, and he came up. Well, anyway, this guy reviews uh, movies and stuff in Hollywood, and he had one show, and then I watched it, and there's some good points made until he got to the racial point. He was talking about uh, how wokeness has kind of ruined Hollywood stories, which I don't disagree with. But he said something. He said, well, if you look at the history of Hollywood movies, you know, 
maybe white men tell better stories. I said, okay. And I just let him go on. And I'm like, this dude ain't never heard of Spike Lee. And if he has, he probably has issues because, you know, Spike tells a lot the way it is. He points out everybody's flaws, black and white, but he's definitely pro-black and totally rock with that. But he's still a good storyteller. He's had years of doing it. John Singleton. Um, we can even go back further. Mario Van Peebles. Um, trying to think of anybody else. Well, and bring it to the present day, F. Gary Gray. Yeah. Okay. It's perception. There's a term, black or white ice is colder. So anything else is not white ice, it's ice, it doesn't matter. But anything else is probably not going to be the best. That's the perception of black people and black creators. People either look at it, well, all you guys can do is the hood stuff. No, 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 I guarantee there's somebody out there, a black creator who can do more than that. There's a black son. There's actually a... Um, can't think of it now, but there's a group online. It might be a Facebook group. It's black women who write science fiction. Wow. Yeah. And, and they've been around for a while. Okay, okay, well, that's a resource to tap from. If you're a black director uh, and you want to do science fiction, well, well there you go. Right. Reach out to, you know, so we, we just need to promote stuff like that and be aware of each other. And um, we, we just need to push that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Um, and one, one little personal uh, soapbox that I want to stand on is uh, that connects to what we're saying in, in, in a number of different ways. Uh, how disgraceful the treatment of the actress, actor, actress, who played um, in the Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, limited series, Moses Ingram. She is a wonderful, terrific actress who her personality is nothing like the character she played is two different people, which means she's gifted, she's talented, she's skilled as an actor. And she did an incredible job in um, Obi-Wan Kenobi, but she got dumped on by so many people as being a bad actor, uh, ruining the series and, you know, all this nonsense. And, and that uh, really hurts, you know, um, it makes you a little angry. I, okay, because you know, you're this more of the Star Wars dude than I am, especially like the, the newer stuff. I've never seen, uh, I've seen a few things online, um, both pro and against. Um, is where we could kind of agree, probably, hopefully. Um, Star Wars has definitely been co-opted to a point. Um, again, it's like what I said before, it will be represented, but I, I would prefer somebody support original Black creators. I mean, it's great. Black representation in Star Wars is cool, because I don't know about you, but it always bothered me. Okay, Lando Caressian is all you got. The one, the whole unit, the black people just disappeared. There's like a yeah. virus that killed all the black people. They're Come on, George. George. Huh? They're in another galaxy. Yeah, the segre the, the planet segregated. <laughs> Jim Crow planet. <laughs> but it's it's like, well. Okay, so yes, we need it, black people in there. I, I like John Boyega in, in the first yeah. one. I thought that was cool, especially the the idea of him being a um, kind of an anti stormtrooper, stormtrooper. Mm -hmm. I thought that was cool. Yeah, uh, even the symbolism, have a black dude and then white stormtrooper. I was like, okay, that's cool. I like that. That's a great intro. I never would have seen that coming, and you never see their faces anyway. They could have been anybody, mm -hmm. um, but. My thing is support actual black creators who could do something more badass than Star Wars itself. Don't just sprinkle a little bit of us here. I get it. You're trying to widen the, um, it, it, I'll put it this way. My personal opinion when it comes to affirmative action, 
hire me first because I can do the job. I'm not afraid of diversity, but that shouldn't be all you see because then it, it's just, it's aesthetic to me. Right. You just look around, it's like, oh, a black one, a yellow one. And a just woman. feeling a quota. Exactly. To telling a story. I want you to see me as my skill, uh, again, back to that skill sets, what I can bring to you as an individual. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, let this Moses lady direct an episode if she has the, the, the talent. Then I'm going to be like, let that sister have some ownership of, of, um, of uh, a bit of the franchise or whatever. Yeah, decision making. Yeah, 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 that's what I want to see. It's great we're getting black actors in certain part and and some and of the she, race swapping. Go ahead. And she may have uh, reached that level had they not uh, decided to cancel the spinoff series that they were going to make with her. They canceled it before they started it, and because as a as a, um, a lead actor, typically in television, the lead actor of a series if successful moves on to stay in the series as an actor, but also get uh, producing credit. And so she had that opportunity that was available to her, but it was taken away from her when they decided to cancel any plans to make a spinoff with her in another uh, Star Wars uh, series. You know what, if I could talk to that lady, I'd be like, you know what? Find a Black creator who wants to do something similar. You've you've been in a science fiction, so you you saw how they ran it at the studio, the Disney studio when they were doing it. Now find some black creator that wants to do some stuff. You can teach them uh, some of what you saw, and then we can we can get you back into the spotlight. Yeah, that's that's the type of uh, strategy I would use. And maybe that black creative is you which is the whole point of why I have you on my show, uh, my video blog, is because I feel that you are extremely talented person, very knowledgeable. Um, and I know another uh, young uh, uh, filmmaker, aspiring filmmaker, who's also, I have the same amount of faith in him as I do in you. Um, and, uh, and I think that there's a lot of, ahead of you uh, in this industry, in this business, in this create creative world that we're existing in and uh, and i said i hope i can live up to all this this is you put me in some big shoes i i i am humbled and i definitely appreciate it i definitely appreciate it this is how we need to support each other this is yes. how with any black people watching this right here is what we need to we need to talk to each other figure out strategies and and, and uh whatever to get where we need to go and even with our most meager of resources. Like I said before, I think I said before, everything I own, I I worked extra hours at my job. I, um, Peter would tell you, I'm in the midst of making one final upgrade to my, uh, my kit, which will include a actual cinema camera. And I'm working overtime and killing myself for the last two weeks just to do it. Uh, selling old gear, everything. It's make life work for you instead of against you, all right? If that's what you have to do to get to the next step, do it, okay? Because it's the next step that's important, not necessarily how you got to get there. And as Black people, because typically we don't, I don't know too many Black folks with trust funds. I don't know too many Black people just go to their grandma and be, hey, can you loan me like two grand? You kind of tap into whatever little extra, you know, no, um, we can barely go to each other's businesses and ask for them to invest this because those businesses are doing enough to stay afloat, you know. Um, this right here is, to me is very, very important, you know, whoever sees it. And again, to that young black talent out there, hold on to that. Okay, hold on to that. Again, the thing that you do most natural is probably the thing you should be doing throughout life, and especially as a creative. Awesome. That's great. And, uh, and I want to throw one final word out there to all the uh, young actors and uh, even uh, uh, behind the scenes people. Uh, 
don't forget about theater, live theater. It's a great place to get uh, training and understanding of the art and the craft. And it's the best place to, to learn, I feel. And then you can take what you learn from live theater, live shows and carry it over to the uh, uh, motion picture industry. So, yeah. Okay. Definitely back that, even though I'm, I'm a filmmaker, dude, I definitely, I saw Peter and I met. So. Yeah. So, uh, and we're going to be working together yes. uh, in the very near future. Uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to that. We got Lawrence Fishburne and um, I don't know who I look like. But it's <laughs> definitely you. Lawrence Fishburne over here. <laughs> <laughs> Younger uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne's getting getting up there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an honor to be compared to him as far as looks goes. So, yeah. Thank you. He's a good actor, too. Yeah, he's a good actor, too. I'm not a good actor, but, you know. Let's do a Lawrence Fishburne impression. You'll be fine. <laughs> I won't do that now. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Jabari, for joining me on my Playwrights Corner. It's been uh, very, very beneficial uh, and instructional, uh, full interview. And um, I am very appreciative of you joining me on this. I appreciate being asked, man. Well, that's all for this episode of the Playwrights Corner. And I thank you so much. Once again, my guest today was Jabari, he's on this side, was uh, Jabari Cole. And I am Peter Anthony Fields. And I will see you on the next Playwrights Corner. Take care. <laughs>